Well, the title is Preaching Women. Are they right or wrong according to the Bible? What is a false church? A whore? What do they believe and do? What is God's true church? A virgin. What do they believe and do? Unconverted, uncalled people have their way of disbelief about the Bible, usually making God's words of no effect. Can any converted person on occasions prophesy for God? Usually they only speak a few brief words for God about a situation when asked. God selects his true ministers to preach and they also prophesy. Let's look and see what the Bible says. Acts 21 verse 8 and 9. Of course, we want to have a balanced view of what God says and understand what He says. Acts 21, verse 8 and 9. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came to Caesarea and entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist which was one of the seven and above them. He was one of the original seven deacons. You know, Stephen, Philip, and, and Prochorus, and Timon, and I don't remember all their names, but this Philip here was one of the seven deacons. Of course, at this time, he had grown before God and went on and became an evangelist. But notice what it says in the same man. Now, this is Philip. had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So what does that mean? You know, any time that someone asks you a question and you know the what it means, you know, or how to explain it, God would want you to speak to them. But God don't want, you know, people that's not preachers you know, going out and standing on the street corner and thumping on drums and trying to preach before people in that way. God does not want that. But anyway, this Philip had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Probably meaning that sometimes people, where the people would come and ask them a question about something. And they would be able to answer them. Which anyone in here should be able to do that. We'll see that in the Bible later on. But anyway, these four daughters who prophesied for God, and I'm sure they just angry people that had asked them, false women preachers use this scripture to justify their ways. If you ask some big woman preacher that had a big following, why are you preaching? They would point that scripture out to you justifying themselves. But let's go on and see what, what the understanding is. Prophesy means to reveal by divine inspiration. Keep that in mind. If false Christians say and believe something wrong to us, and they do, they're pretty regular, they come up to us and They'll have their opinion about something and they'll say something that's wrong. We, you know, if they ask us, we should, you know, we should be able to respond to them the truth. And they want a response from us and they do that sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, if somebody like that that believes they're a Christian, they come up and say something wrong to us and want a response from us, then we should be able 
through God's inspiration, set them straight. Although they might not understand and might not believe what you said. But they will remember in time to come. Let's look and see what it says to do in certain situations. 1 Peter 3.15 First Peter 3, and in verse 15 it says, But sanctify, or, you know, set, to, set God apart in, your, in your, your heart, you know, set to sanctify the Lord God in your heart. But notice what it says, it says, And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you of the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and pure. So God wants us to actual people. He don't want us going out this throwing stuff out to them when they don't want to know, they don't want to hear it. But if they want to know, then, you know, we're different from the world, entirely different. Then God wants us to be able to anchor people. Let's look at Luke 21, verse 12 to 15. Luke 21, beginning in verse 12, it says, now this is Christ speaking here, he said, but he, prior to this, he's talking about persecution and stuff like that, you know, different problems, but he said, but before all of these, they shall lay hands upon you. Now they means unconverted people, shall lay hands upon you and persecute you, delivering up you to synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it or they shall turn to you for a testimony. He said, Settle it therefore, settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all of your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So, again, here God is saying, if you're going to be brought before a ruler or some high religious person or some jailer or some judge, somebody, and they say things to you, they're presenting their opinion. But your opinion is one that is right, of course, through God. But God said, then he'll give you the mouth to answer people. Now I want to elaborate about a couple of circumstances and there's been more in my lifetime but I want to elaborate to you to, to get you to see something. About 30 to 35 years ago I was asked if I was born again. At that time I was in the, the God's church and a lot of people think we're odd, we're different, you know, we're weird, they even like that. But anyway they was asked are you born again? I said, no. I thought you was a Christian. I said, well, I am. Well, how come you say you haven't been born again? I said, well, I will, I hope to be born again when Christ returns. Because that's when born again takes place. That didn't do them no good because that person stayed. The continued with the same belief that he had. He probably just thought I was weird. And another circumstance, this is just to get you to see what God would want us to do. God would want us to set people straight, even though they won't believe it now, but in a life to come, they'll remember it. But anyway, another time, when I worked at Oakwood as an electrician there, there was a guy that worked in the maintenance department he went around, dug ditches, you know, spread salt, whatever the situation may be. But he was a deacon or a preacher in a church there at Marcy Stein, the word of the church. And of course, he just worked a couple of years at Oakwood, and then he left and went on somewhere else and done something else. But about 10 years later, I saw him down around Whitley somewhere, and he said, Hey, Mr. Scott, he remembered then. I said, Well, 
doing fire, I guess. And at that time, I'd had a mild heart attack just, a, I don't know, two or three months or six months before that or something. He said, you been doing all right? And I said, yeah, doing pretty good. I said, I had a heart attack, but got over it pretty good, thankfully, you know. He said, well, now remember, he's a deacon or a preacher in one of the churches there. He said, well, he said, I'll pray for you. And I'll announce in church that I want the congregation to pray for me. I said, I don't want you to do that. Why? I said, well, your belief and my belief is entirely different. You have your way and I have mine and they don't mix. I said, I don't want you to pray for me. I said, I'll be all right because I you know, know God will take care of me. But anyway, of course, he remember he will remember that. Me telling him, don't pray for me, don't announce in your church. The Bible says, What has light got to do with darkness? What has righteousness got to do with unrighteousness? So we're different. We're not like the world. We don't want to be like the world. But anyway, I told him no. God's truth spoken to unconverted are disregarded for now. Remembered to be remembered much later. They will remember these things. There have been other situations too that I covered this day. Prophesying for God certainly is one thing. Usually only a few words spoken. And that's True preaching for God, true, God's true preachers, David and Mr. Shelton and Mr. Trent and all of them, Joe Schuster, all of them, true preaching for God certainly includes prophesying too. Because David would get up and talk to us and he would say under inspiration things that's going to happen, things that's, you know, from God that we need to know. Now, briefly, let us look at what God says about preaching women. We've talked about prophesying and preachers, and hopefully everybody will understand. But let's look and see. 1 Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14, beginning in verse 33. He says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Now this is talking to converted people, to God's true churches. He says, Let your women keep silence in church, in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in church. Now, of course, this means if God's got one woman that's converted and her man's not converted, and that happens sometimes, then they should go to the minister and ask if there's anything that turns out of it. But God says it's not permitted for them to speak. First Timothy 2 1 Timothy 2, beginning in verse 11. First Timothy 2, beginning in verse 11, it says, Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer or allow not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over a man but to be in silence. Verse 14, for, as Ad, for Adam was first born, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. I wasn't going to read that. I'm just going to read through 12, I'm sorry. But anyway, verse 11 and 12, that's what I intended to read. But anyway, it says not to teach. Do we agree? or disagree with what God says through the Bible about preaching women. By false and poison fruits you shall know false teachers. 
Many unconverted, worldly-minded women disagree with God. A lot of women preachers today, they disagree with God. And preach to sometimes small and sometimes large crowds. I've seen them probably 30,000, 40,000 people, big crowds, maybe not that many, but 10 or 20,000 anyway of people preaching, preaching to them. Little crowds, some of them just a little church with just a few people, sometimes big thousands of crowds. But anyway, God will eventually deal with all misguided people who listen to all false preachers, both male and female. They know not what they do. All people everywhere in time, us too for now, must put away all false ways and false teachings and take up God's truths that endure forever. A mortal life is there through God.